Welcome back to that dead guy. If you were just on Instagram, you might have seen my live. So if you're not, you can go to Rob Lennox and you can follow any of the pictures that I post there and stuff. And uh, hopefully if you're a subscriber for YouTube, you're also a follower for Rob Lennox on Instagram. So my Instagram live just talked about the snowstorm. So if you want to see about the snowstorm, you can go to check that out. All right, so today I am going to answer the questions that you left on my video from a couple days ago about questions about Canada, and uh, I've gotten quite a few great ones, so I'm going to go through those and answer that. But first, I want to say thank you for subscribing. Thank you for those comments. Thank you for the likes. You're helping increase the, uh, the uh, followers for this page and this channel and making the content even better, and hopefully this will make it uh, more global too, having one of these interactives. Uh, hopefully I'm going to be able to do one of these a week. What I'd like to do is at the end of this, I'm going to give you a new topic. You can leave comments in this video for other questions on that topic, and then next week I will answer and then go on from there. So this is part one of hopefully many. So let's start with the first question. First one I see comes from Unknown Origin. Uh, it says, he's seen videos on the tidal bore rafting in Canada. It looks like so much fun. Have I tried it? No, I haven't tried it. Also, does Canada celebrate Mail Carrier Appreciation Day on February 4th? Uh, we don't. I had only heard about it through this question and a couple people on Instagram that sent me messages knowing that I am a mail carrier. So I uh, thank you for those uh, people that... Uh, gave me appreciation. Um, maybe it's something that will grow and will be something in Canada too. Who knows, one day. But February 4th uh, is a good day for it here in the winter. And then he asked the, me a question at the end of that. And that question is going to be my topic for next week. So I will leave that till the end to talk about. So let's go back and talk about the tidal rafting or uh, tidal surfing is what we have here. So the Petty Kodiak River runs up into uh, to Moncton and it uh, feeds out of the Bay of Fundy. The Bay of Fundy has the highest tides in the world. So you're going to see the what we call the tidal bore, which is a single wave that comes up the river. And people now surf on it. You can get on it and surf a single wave for miles. It's not that it's high, it just it doesn't recede out again. So that's how the the um, the wave level or the, the tide level goes up is that you have a single wave that comes in and like the ocean you don't see it, it doesn't recede back out again. It just comes in and then another one follows it and then several meters of water go up until it's full and then later on it all recedes back out in one fell swoop too so that's kind of how you have the ebbs and flows of the tides that are here and people surf on it if i can get some video i will show you what that wave looks like coming in i don't know if i have any that have the uh, surfers on it but i will look and see if i can include it here in the video so thank you for that question the next question i have comes from uh basil in india and he says what kind of birds are residents in my neighborhood? So uh, we've got blackbirds and we've got blue jays and cardinals and uh, some yellow finches. Uh, there's some partridges. We have all sorts. Uh, I have a bird book that shows uh, birds of Atlantic Canada. If I can take a picture of it, I'll post it up here so you can see that. Uh, so yeah, we've got a whole lot, a lot of different birds that are in the neighborhood. And you don't have to go far before you see hawks and bald eagles and all sorts of uh uh, birds. So we've, if you're a bird watcher, it's probably a nice place to come and see because there's a variety of them. So thank you for that question. The next question I have comes from uh, Leave in Belgium and uh, she says, what's a typical breakfast, lunch and dinner in Canada? And I'm going to say there's nothing typical about uh, any of the meal. I'll say specifically what we do here in this household and uh, from the background, but because Canada is made up from of nations all over, um, you might have uh, pierogies in one house and you might have poutine in another house and fish in another house and roast beef and Yorkshire puddings in our house. So uh, depending on what your background is, your meals are going to be different. Here for breakfast, we tend to have cereals or bagels and toast, um, maybe eggs and bacon, uh, depending on how quick. Me personally, I don't eat breakfast. I get up, I get ready for work, I go, I work, and then when I get home from work, that's when I have my first meal of the day. But I know my wife, she makes eggs and takes them with her to work. The kids usually come up and have a toast a bagel or uh, have some um, cereal or something like that. That's what they have for breakfast. At lunchtime here, it's usually leftovers from the night before, but you could do up some craft dinner, which I've shown before, or make a peanut butter sandwich. Um, 
ramen noodles, Mr. Noodles, that type of thing is kind of a lunchtime meal. Not a big meal, but uh, soup and sandwiches is typically a, a Canadian type uh, lunchtime meal. And then supper, that's when you're, you have your biggest meal of the day. So we would have, because I come from an English background, like a roast beef or Yorkshire puddings, but I also make uh, chicken parmesan, which is Italian. And um, I do a shake and bake, which is breaded chicken that's uh, baked in the oven and roast potatoes. We have meals that are, are like that, a little bit heartier. Our vegetables are usually cucumbers and uh, peppers, carrots, broccoli, cauliflower, um, we tend to keep it raw, but sometimes we steam the broccoli and, and um, boil up the carrots and put butter and brown sugar or something on them too to, to sweeten them up. Uh, we do do that. To drink, um, coffees, juices, water, milk, those typical things. Uh, might have pop or a, a soda if you want to call it at uh, supper on takeout night. So for us, Friday night is generally takeout night. So I don't do any uh, cooking that night. We go and find a uh, local restaurant to sit down and eat at or bring something home from them. Um, that's kind of our special night out. And then Saturday is kind of a lazy night. We tend to do something like uh, chicken wings or uh, nacho chips, something something like that. So those are our typical meals in our household. I won't speak for every Canadian's household, but that's what we tend to do. So thank you for that. Uh, da -da -da. The next one I get is from Julie Donovan. And she says she wants to know what Canadian currency looks like. Uh, if you have loonies and toonies, don't you? So yes, I do. I'm going to show you some pictures here. So a loony is a $1 coin, and uh, that replaced our bill. And it's called a loony because it has a picture of a loon on it. It's gold, uh, or it's gold in color. And then the toonie, uh, which is the $2 coin, it uh, it's just two loonies. So it's $2, so it's two loonies. That's why it went. It doesn't uh, necessarily have a loon on it. There have been some. Usually it's a polar bear on it. Um, but it can be different different animals or different images that show up on these coins. So a loony <laughs> is a $1 coin and a toonie is a $2 coin because it's two loonies. So that's how, why we uh, call them that. And then the rest of our bills are just that. They're paper money or uh, the synthetic plastics. I'll show you some pictures of what those look like. Um, they're quite well done. They have uh, lots of different images of uh, former prime ministers or the queen. Um, uh, they've changed it to uh, have amazing people that have accomplished great things. Uh, we recently have made some changes to different currency that way. There are uh, lots of security codes in them. There's braille on them for people with uh, seeing impairments. Um, there are uh, some holograms in them, so it makes it hard for them to be forged. And uh, yeah, there's lots of different things about the, the currency. and. I will show you. So I talked about the loony. That is the loony. And you can see the loon on it. This is the toonie. There's the polar bear on it. On the back we have the queen. From part of the Commonwealth. We have a quarter. There's a caribou on it. And the queen. We have a, a dime, 10 cent piece. No animal on this one. This is the blue nose two on it. With the queen on the back. We have a nickel, the five cent piece. It has a beaver on it. And the queen on the back. And until recently, we had the penny. And there's a maple leaf on it. But, and, and the queen, of course. Uh, but the, may, uh, the penny has been discontinued, so we no longer have a penny in currency now. Uh, you may still find them in change coming back, but they're not produced anymore. And then we go to bills. They're talking about doing away with the $5 and going to a coin as well for that, but it hasn't happened yet. So here we have uh, our currency. You can see it has a hologram in it. There's images. There's different things. Parliament's in there. Uh, Sir Wilfrid Laurier is there and in the image there as well. On the back we have the uh, Canada arm which is in space. You can see the holograms there. Lots of different codes. Clear view of the hologram of the maple leaf there. And if you run a uh, digital light through that maple leaf, 
you'll also see a bunch of fives to indicate the five dollar bill there are fives within here in the strip lots of different codes and there's braille on the uh, on the currency as well in the top corner i don't know if it's going to show up properly but there is braille here for the and then the ten dollar all the similar features so john a is on the bill which is our first prime minister the 20 has the queen and the Vimy Ridge Monument in France for our soldiers. The 50. Arctic Explorer on the back. And we do have 100. I don't have 100 <laughs> to show you. But you can Google that and see that. So that's it for that, Julie. Those are our currencies. Um, she also asks, are there any words or phrases that we use on a regular basis that might be considered typical Canadian or slang that have not heard of before? Canada's always been top on her travel bucket list. So hopefully you get to do that one day. Typical slang, that's hard to uh, come by as a, as a Canadian to know what we have. I know we get uh, um, like criticized but mocked for using the term A at the end of uh, sentences. Not everybody does that, it is a regional thing. So if you say, uh, are you going to the hockey game A? That would have, be how it comes out. It ends like, as a question mark is what you kind of have it. Uh, I know there are other areas that do um, different things that are at the end of it too. Uh, but typical slang, I can't think of anything right off the bat. I know there is gonna be idioms that you probably haven't heard of. Um, that we say, you know, people talk about the uh, Canadian tuxedo, which is a jean jacket with jeans as uh, pants. <laughs> I don't, it, it's, that's an old joke about Canadians. It's not really slang, is, but it is a terminology of uh, how some people dress. You know, people that uh, wear lots of plaid, the hunters, that, that's another outfit or typical thing but i wouldn't say it's specific only to canadians that do that and not all canadians are like that it's all it's very regional and you probably could get into uh different regional things too um like newfoundland newfoundland is the furthest east province you can get and uh, the language that they're uh, they speak um, is not always typical english like when they say um how's it going by how are you doing? It means the same thing. How's it going by? Uh, where are you to? It means where are you from? <laughs> where are you going? That's kind of, so there are things like that that they would say that are different. And when you got to the, the West Coast, things are a little different. Um, shoes that go on your feet here are called sneakers. Out West, they call them runners. So both Canadians, both calling them different things. It'll turn on all oh, geez. I'm wearing a sweater. I know people in England or um, other areas call them jumpers. Um, if it had a hood on it, we'd call it a hoodie. <laughs> so Canadian, I would say Canada and uh, our terminology gets very well mixed between England and the United States. So we take an amalgamation of both of them. We have... Uh, our temperatures in Celsius, but when we talk about how tall we are, we don't talk about it in centimeters, we talk about it in feet and inches. So we, we mix the two. We drive in uh, kilometers or kilometers per hour here, but our weight is in pounds. We don't go by kilos. So we mix the two together. And maybe that's very Canadian in itself that we are amalgamating uh, things and, and maybe confusing people too. I know I had someone ask me how tall I was and I said that I was five foot eight. And they said, no, no, how much in centimeters? I didn't know, I had to look it up. I had to find a conversion of that. So around 180 centimeters, I guess. So that's where we are. So I think that answers those questions. If you have further questions, you certainly can reach out and I can try to get them or we can use it for a different topic. All right, the next question comes from uh, Maria Nimala in Finland. And she says, what are your three top destinations in Canada, travel destinations? She's only been to Toronto, but she liked it a lot. Um, Toronto is a great city. Uh, it is the largest city in Canada. It has sports teams, it has the arts. Um, it's a very business oriented city. Um, 
But uh, one of our three top destinations, we have tons of places that you want to see. I'm going to say my top city to see is Montreal. Um, the mix of French and English that's there, the culture that they have, you know, they have uh, Cirque du Soleil comes from Montreal and from Quebec. Uh, so there's a big thing to see there. They have beautiful botanical gardens. They have the Montreal Canadian hockey team um, and that's there as well, which is my team. So that's fantastic. Um, I went to university at McGill for a while there, so uh, I have a, a bit bias, I guess, with Montreal, but it has a lot going on and it's a beautiful city and the food is fantastic. Lots of different cultures that are there as well, too. So that's a great. Another destination would be the Canadian Rockies, whether it's Banff or Lake Louise or Jasper or even going to Whistler in uh, British Columbia. Um, going to the Canadian Rockies is a destination that must uh, is a must to see. Um, so much nature there and uh, if you like hiking and camping and skiing and um, they've got it all in the Rockies so that's fantastic. Uh, third destination probably I'm gonna I'm gonna have to say here in the Maritimes so if uh, you're going into New Brunswick we've got lakes and forests and hiking spots to go to there and beaches and Nova Scotia's got beaches and, and Cape Breton uh, which is the, the eastern tip of Nova Scotia they have the highlands uh, which is the closest thing you're going to get to uh, Scottish scenery here. Uh, so windy, curvy roads up uh, hilly in areas with lakes and things. Beautiful spots to see. And of course, uh, Prince Edward Island with uh, Anna Green Gables um, is here in Atlantic Canada. Or you can go all the way over to Newfoundland, which is the furthest, like I said before. Um, and they've got beautiful uh, whale watching and all sorts of things. And uh, the culture is, is fantastic. So lots to see in all different parts of the country. I didn't even touch on the prairies and what's there or um, more in Ontario and Quebec. There's lots of things to see. Top three, though, uh, for me are going to be the Rockies, uh, City of Montreal and uh, Atlantic Canada. All right. Now, uh, Maria also has one other question. She wanted to know about languages. What languages do we study in school? Is French mandatory? Um, in Finland, they have uh, Finnish and Swedish that are mandatory, and English, German, and French are other languages that they have. And you can even study Estonian and Spanish in school. Here we have French and English. French is not mandatory. I wouldn't say that, and especially across the country. You probably will take a French credit no matter where you are just to have it, but it is not mandatory to be bilingual. And if you're in Quebec, French is the first language, so you're going to get French first and English as your second. Uh, the only exception might be in Montreal, where Montreal is predominantly an English city. Um, so depending on what school you go to, uh, you may have an English school first with French on the side, but you're going to get both languages. Here in New Brunswick, we're the only New Br um, bilingual province, so we do have French in the schools and we have different levels of which you can take it. So I took it as an immersion program, which means you take it from grade one and take it right through till grade 12. And your subjects tend to be almost all in French. So I took history and science and math um, all in French right up until high school. Um, even in high school, I, I took those, some of those subjects in French as well. If you start in the late immersion program, which starts in grade three, you're only taking a, a few subjects that are now in French. And then if you're in English immersion, you'll only take a French credit as you go through. So you'll only take the French class, but not your English maths and science and histories and all those will all be in English. So that's what you have. And uh, we have options, I guess, is what it says in the end. But uh, French is still predominant and we have a, a, a need to preserve it. And it leads directly into the next question. One of the killjoys is the name of the person that asked, is there a chance for French to be completely disappear from Canada one day? And what do people think about it? Are they concerned? So I'm going to say, no, they're not concerned in most of the parts of the country. In Quebec, they are preserving their culture, their language as a French province. Uh, so they have political parties that that's kind of more their agenda. Uh, you know, they've even talked about separating and becoming their own nation. Uh, that's what's concerning for Canadians. We don't want to see our country fracture. We like the diversity that's uh, here within all of our provinces. Uh, we are not concerned that the French will disappear. The, the bond in Quebec is strong and uh, they will remain there here in New Brunswick. We are linked to the French and English communities. So it is important that it's here. 
is there a political undertone of uh, controversy with language? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, different groups think that others are, are getting more uh, attention and maybe more funding, uh, easier to get jobs if you have one language over another. Uh, these debates have been going on for many, many years. And uh, certainly in New Brunswick, it's gone on for a long time, but we, for the most part, have learned to live uh, together and uh, things are, are great that way. And the opportunity to be able to speak both languages is is great. There are nations like, you know, Finland that are speaking multiple languages, like five and six different languages. That can only benefit you to learn the culture and languages of other countries and be able to speak with them um, in their own language. So for us to do French and English, that's great. In the United States, for them to have Spanish with uh, being so close to Mexico, uh, that's important too to have it. I wish we had more languages offered in our in our school systems for the kids to learn um, because it only gives them better opportunities for jobs later in life. All right, moving on to the next one. The next one comes from Yulia in Russia, and uh, she talks about uh, the kids don't go to school if the temperatures get down lower than minus 30 degrees Celsius. Snowfalls don't affect the schools. Her question is, uh, Canada, what are the three typical Canadian dishes you recommend a visitor to taste if he probably won't find them anywhere else in the world? Okay, typical Canadian dishes. Well, the first one has got to be poutine. If you don't know what poutine is, it is French fries covered in cheese curds, covered in gravy. It looks um, revolting, <laughs> what I couldn't say if you see it for the first time. Uh, it is a comfort food. It is heavy. It is uh, delicious. Uh, people that are coming home from the bars at night crave it. Uh, so it is a hangover food if that's uh, the way you go. But uh, poutine is something that when they talk about Canadians, uh, that's the dish that's right up there that's typically typically Canadian that comes uh, from uh, the French province of Quebec, first and foremost. Uh, I enjoy it, but I don't enjoy it all the time. It is a heart attack waiting to happen with all that uh, cheese and uh, French fries and gravy on top of it. Um, other than that, typically Canadian is hard to say. So once again, because we have a nation made of um, all nations and all their cultures and all their food, um, so many different things come in but what i'd say for us here in atlantic canada lobster is key so you can't go just anywhere and get lobster it's in certain areas in the united states maine which is just below us here on the map um, they claim to be big log lobster fishermen as well but new brunswick and our area are the lobster capital of the world we produce uh, we, or we pull out the most amount of lobster out of the ocean and ship it around the world um, France at Christmas time gets tons and tons of lobster from us. Japan gets lots of lobster that comes from us. Um, so typically Canadian, um, probably that um, because of the amount that we uh, have here, uh, lobster, I'm going to say is typically Canadian. You don't just get it anywhere. And sometimes it is dreadfully expensive. For uh, us, my mother uh, used to take lobster sandwiches to school and um, she would throw them in the garbage because... It meant you were poor at the time because lobster was so cheap to get here that uh, only poor people ate lobster. Now it is a delicacy and only the rich tend to eat lobster around the world. We can still fortunately get it pretty cheaply here. but uh, So we can get it $5 a pound sometimes, but I know that uh, in peak season sometimes it's a little bit more expensive than that, like $10 and $12 a pound and around the world it's even more expensive. So lobster, poutine, those are two big ones I would say that are typically Canadian. Let's move on to the next question. The next one comes from Israel and it's uh, from Physics uh, 2112. And he says, other than the pandemic and without getting into politics, what are the major news stories Canadians or people in my part of the country are following these days? All right. Olympics just started in Beijing, so that's going to be uh, a topic at the water cooler or at work these days. How are Canadians doing today? I know in the first day we've gotten two medals, one bronze and one silver, so that's a great start for us. I grabbed the local newspaper just to ask this question. I don't generally get a newspaper, but I bought this for someone that I'm going to ship out to. And uh, I'm sure if he's watching, he knows it's coming, though. 
Um, and so yeah, there's the top topic. O'Toole gets boot as Tory leader. So national politics, um, the leader of the opposition, his caucus just threw him out. So they're looking for a new leader now. We look down labor shortages among top concerns. So improved immigration policies, more affordable houses named as potential so uh, solutions. So workforce, we have lots of jobs here and not enough people to fill them. That's one major language reform needed in report. So we talked about that. It is always a question of talk of uh, what do we do with language reform here? And what else are they talking about that's important in the newspaper? Community wants to improve beach access for tourism. Um, one here. Tim Horton switches to white plastic lids. So how's that important? That makes page six of the newspaper. Tim Hortons and what lids are on our coffees. That's an important uh, news thing that people are talking about. Yeah, we're pretty simple here. Uh, we probably have the same type of topics that you guys are talking about. You talk about the pandemic, you talk about your politics, you talk about politics in the rest of the world and how it might affect our economies. Um, for me personally, I try to stay out of the politics. Uh, I used to want to be a politician. I used to be right into all the news and what was going on. Now I just want to focus on what's positive in my life, what's going to be positive for my family. And uh, that's where I want to put my effort and my attention these days. So when it comes to local news, um, I don't buy the newspaper. I don't tend to go to news sites. If I get things through Facebook and social media, then so be it. Um, but what I want to do is remain positive and talk about positive things. So uh, the big question or news story I want to follow right now is the Olympics and how our Canadian athletes are doing and the feel-good stories you hear of other athletes too. All right. What else do we have here? He asked another question on it. And that was, a, am I a Rush fan? He said, maybe for the next... Rush is Canadian, so let's keep it in the Canadian topic. Uh, I do like the music of Rush. Uh, am I an enthusiast and know every song and every lyric? No, I'm not. Um, Rush is a big Canadian band and has been around for a long time. Uh, if you said, are you a Tragically Hip fan, which is another Canadian band and maybe doesn't have a global presence like Rush, yes, I am a Tragically Hip fan. And if you haven't heard of them, you should go and Google their music. Um, we love their stuff here. There's a Canadian flag in the background, Martin Brodeur at the Olympics. That's what that uh, is from when uh, the 2010 Olympics were in Vancouver. So those are all the questions that I have for this topic. It has been a good topic. I hope uh, you've enjoyed the content that is there and uh, you like what's going on. The question that I had as a future topic came from Unknown Origin, and he says... Uh, why don't we do one on uh, Canada Post? So my topic is, do you have any questions about my job at Canada Post for next week? So write in your comments here if you have questions of what you want to know about working at Canada Post, and uh, I can do my best to answer those. I may have answered some of them in the videos I've done in the past, but I am happy to answer them again. And I know there's lots of people that have been applying for jobs here in Canada that have reached out to me through Canada Post. So I'm glad about that, that I can be representative that way. So got questions about Canada Post, fire away. I'll do my best to answer them and uh, we'll have another interesting video for next week. Until then, stay safe. What, Polo? You say like, subscribe, share, and tell all your friends. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy?